on Get Up. And this has been a very interesting little moment in time for the Steelers. Wide receiver George Pickens, his effort has come under scrutiny after that play, among others, where he stopped engaging near the goal line on a first quarter Jalen Warren run on Saturday. There's been so much debate and discussion about that moment. Here was Pickens explaining it. You stay on the block too long, you can get ran up on very easy. So, so some people are questioning your effort. All the people that's questioning my effort, down, 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 play football, they do what y'all do. All right, I, I wish you could see and hear the reactions of the guys at my desk as he's talking. We're going to play. Hold on one second. Cindy, come out. Just just, just let D. Wood very quickly, because he I, he almost jumped out of his chair. I still have Mike Tomlin to get to, and I'm going to get to Brooke Pryor in a second. But just when you heard that, you reacted so viscerally. Why? Oh, hey, bub, I play football. Mm. And that was that was BS what you just said. Like, this, the, this, the simple fact that you said, well, guys get run up on, and, you know, I possibly get hurt. Hell, you're playing a violent sport. Your chance for you to get injured is almost 100%. The, the one thing that we're taught as players is when you don't play 100%, at 100%, that you're more than likely to get hurt. So for him to come out and say that and then antagonize the media like, you guys have never played. You guys don't know, know what you're talking about. Well, guess what? I played 12 years in the National Football League. I can speak to this um, firsthand that that effort you put out there is bull. And the players in the locker room, should be calling you out for putting that type of effort out there because guess what? Every Not only your teammates, but every team in the National Football League is seeing that. Now they know what type of guy you are. Okay, so, so I, I, I felt you needed to hear the way a former player would react to something like that. Now, now as I mentioned, let's hear from Tomlin because Mike Tomlin was called out to react, and not called out, he was he requested by the media to react to all of this yesterday, and this is what he said. I would like him to be more professional in terms of addressing some of his shortcomings with you guys, but the manner in which he deals with you guys is not necessarily the manner in which he deals with us or himself regarding acknowledging where he is and where he needs to go. When you're winning and doing your jobs, man, a lot of the attention and so forth is on things such as that. When you're not doing your job and losing, you better keep your damn mouth shut and understand that that tracks a certain type of attention as well. And usually that's vulture like attention. So that was Mike Tomlin yesterday. Here's our, our old friend, Brooke Pryor, who's been much too long since we've heard from you. Brooke, of course, covers the Steelers on a day in, day out basis. And you were telling us in our meeting this morning that it is unusual for Mike Tomlin to come out and address the media on a Wednesday, but that, that all of you in the Pittsburgh media felt it was vital to hear from him. Take us through it. You're living this every single day. Take us behind the scenes of how this whole situation is unfolding. Well, Greeny, this is nothing new for George Pickens, and I think that that's why we requested Mike Tomlin, because it had come to such a head that after George Pickens' comments in the, lo in the locker room yesterday, we really needed to hear the head coach's reaction. And when I say this is nothing new, there were character concerns about George Pickens coming out in the draft. There were these vague red flags that talked about a lack of maturity and him getting in his own way, and we're seeing that come to fruition here. You know, I remember him coming off the field in Atlanta Atlanta last year screaming expletives about getting him the ball. I remember in training camp right in front of me, he caught a pass in a one-on-one -on -one drill and he spun the ball down and ran away from it. And Najee Harris had to go grab him and tell him to pick up the football. That's not how they do things. Another time, he ran in front of me and he kicked a pylon over at the end of the play for no reason. And these are just kind of little breadcrumbs that lead us to where we are now with Pickens, someone who has been visibly frustrated throughout the season, pouting when teammates get tired touchdowns, slumping when he doesn't get the ball, and then also what you saw against the Colts where he just didn't give any effort on that block. And so this is why Mike Tomlin came out after we requested him. And the thing is, this is a Mike Tomlin situation where the Steelers have drafted for talent over character in this situation. Mike Tomlin has a high risk, high reward draft strategy, especially with wide receivers. It's like a woman going on Tinder. You're looking through the, the, the bio and it says six feet tall. There's a million red flags, but hey, you're six feet tall, so we're going to take you. And that's what it feels like the Steelers did with George Pickens. And now all of these red flags are coming back and it's created a really big, bad situation in Pittsburgh that Mike Tomlin has to deal with. So stay close, Brooke. I want to be able to come back to you. But Danny, another thing that was brought up here yesterday uh, it was Jeff Saturday who was sitting right here because I was speculating. Obviously, I never played, and I, I never, I don't have anywhere near the perspective that any of the three of you do from your um, inside time. 
my perspective was, well, why is Mike Tomlin allowing this to happen? And Jeff looked me right in the face and he said, Grady, if you think that it is the coach who's responsible for that sort of thing, that, that demonstrates what you don't know. Coach sets the standard, players apply it on a daily basis. Every great coach will tell you one of the reasons why the team became great was player ownership. The, the Steelers have the second youngest offense in all of football, I think behind the Green Bay Packers. So who's the pro? Who, who's the adult in that offensive room? I know defensively they got Cam and they've got TJ and, and Minka, but on offense it feels like they don't have one. This, this is honestly the, shocking to me that this is happening. Number one, they should bench them, but they can't because they're not good enough. When did this become okay in Pittsburgh? I played for organizations that weren't good. This is the kind of stupid stuff that we did. We weren't the Steelers. Like, when did this become okay in Pittsburgh? Heinz Ward and, and Heath Miller and, and Ben Roethlisberger have to be rolling over and go, what is going on? Mm -hmm. Because this was the type of stuff that for Pittsburgh, for a person who grew up watching some of the elite Pittsburgh Steeler teams, to watch this unfold, it always felt like everybody in the Steelers organization, the name on the front meant way more than the name on the back. It doesn't feel that way right now. Well, I guess what I'm trying to ask, yes, I hear all of that and I agree completely. I guess what I'm asking you is, how much of this is on the coach? I mean, part of it is on the coach. There's no question about it. The, 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 at some point, the coach and the leadership and the, and the words matter. But there's also another aspect that there's not enough veteran leadership and clout on that offense. Steve, what, t t explain to us, what does that look like? So, so now you're a team leader, which you definitively were. And you were on, in particular, I am aware of, the, those Jets teams where Rex was a player's guy and, and you guys would police that. Like, what does that look like? If you've got a guy doing stuff that you are uncomfortable with, that you know doesn't represent what the standard should be, what do you do? You know, Green, those things, uh, we, you know, player-led and, and behind the scenes, we're, it's like, it's like a group of us just putting our arms around a guy like, look. And we, Mike, you was there in, in, with, with the Jets where we brought in a couple, quote-unquote, guys that, that kind of ruffled some feathers from other organizations, but it was the guys in the locker room, the veteran guys in the locker room, we put, the, put our arms around these guys and we said, listen, there's a certain way that we go about our business here. Okay, you can't have 53, you know, 53 angels in the locker room. You're going to have some rough riders in the locker room, but it's the guys in the locker room, the, your leaders in the locker room, that really make sure that the, co the standard is the standard. We don't, we don't allow anyone to deviate from the standard, okay? Because once you, do, once you let that happen, then anarchy takes over. You can't let that type of stuff happen. So, so now a guy does that. N now someone like George Pickens does, you know, I, 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 the guys I'm thinking of that you brought in, like a guy like Santonio Holmes mm -hmm. who had had his issues, played great yes. for the Jets. Yep. If you had, and so I'm not suggesting you had a moment like that with him. Yep. But that would have been an example. If you had had that, what would you have done? Well, I mean, listen, man, it, it's one of those things. First of all, the big guy in the sky doesn't lie. So we always, you know, as players, you look at those type of things and you just, the one thing you want to, you're not going to scream in it, but, but you're going to talk to these guys. He's a young guy. You're going to talk to this guy behind the scenes like, listen, man, like your, your stats and all that type of stuff, it's going to come. And when we win, we all win together. But it takes everybody pulling their own weight for us to get to where we want to go. Remember, this is a Steelers team that's still in the playoff race right now. Yep. Okay, so my, my whole message to him is we got to get past you. It's not about you. It's about us. Because when we win individually, you will win as well. So how does the organization handle something like this, Mike? Yeah, bring him in and say, George, let me give you the answers to the test. You're a second-round pick. You're extension eligible next year. We are going to pay people, as Dee would said, who are selfless, competitive, and putting the team first. And by the way, if it doesn't work out here, George, 31 other teams, you are putting your resume on tape. Every game is a job interview. And what GM and head coach are going to pay a player that is not selfless, that doesn't play hard? So if you want to get paid, the answers to the test is this is unacceptable. Don't believe me. Look around the league. Look at the people we paid. To Dee Wood's point, we actually felt like Raylan Edwards, Santonio Holmes, Antonio Camari, they were great opportunities because we had high character guys that when they came in, we had a way of doing things and it worked well with Rex. And for a long time, it's worked well with Mike Tomlin. For whatever reason right now, that nucleus isn't policing. But, but you don't think he knows that? Who is he? I'm sorry. George Pickens. We yeah. don't think that George Pickens knows the, the reality business-wise of the NFL. He, he might not. 
Someone has to tell him that. He, he, I don't, but th it's not just George Pickens. It happened with Deontay Johnson three weeks ago. This isn't a one-off thing. Right. There's multiple examples of this happening. That's why I'm trying to say, like, when did this become okay in Pittsburgh? Pittsburgh was the standard setter. It was Pittsburgh. It was Baltimore. It was the New England Patriots. That, like, they, they always did on a – this is, what, three weeks ago, a month ago, when another wide receiver just did this? The reality is this. Organizationally, these teams would have never dealt with this stuff in the past. They would have cut them. They would have benched them. But they can't because they're not good enough. They're, they, those are their two most explosive or talented players on offense. There's no way that a good Jets team that was going to the AFC Championship game with Rex Ryan, who I sit with here every Monday morning, would have allowed that kind of effort. There's no, I will, it, would have, I will, it would have gotten to Rex, though. That's why. That's was, my point, Mike yeah, T. Yeah. That's my point. It would have yeah. never gotten there, but somehow it's gotten to that place in Pittsburgh? The, does the message get stale? Does the message get stale? But that's what. If does the message get stale? That's I mean, like, 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 like we talk about, you know, we talk about, you know, and Jeff talked about as well, players in the locker room, okay? But also... Mike T, is, is the message getting stale? Right. Where these guys, where you're talking about multiple players, not just George Pickens, but multiple players where it is showing the evidence of those guys not doing the, what, the Steelers' way, the way the Steelers go, have always Wha went about and conducted their business. Watch the game tonight. Watch the two receivers who play for the Rams tonight, both Puka Nakua and Cooper Cup, who was a freaking triple crown winner la two years ago. Watch how they block. Yeah. And you don't think that it – you think it's okay – to do what you do, and, and by the way, say, I didn't want to get hurt? What happens if they call a reverse for George Pickens and Jalen Warren is the lead blocker and goes, ah, I don't want to block for him? Yeah. That came up yesterday is that Warren could have gotten hurt on that play because he's expecting a block on his right. left side. You just right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. As well. let, let me give Brooke a final word here. Brooke, fill in any uh, blanks here that, that you think we haven't covered. Well, I've got three blanks to fill in. One is the Deontay Johnson play where he didn't go for the fumble. To that, I think of what Mike Tomlin said yesterday when he was asked, can one player's actions like this bleed over to the rest of the locker room? And he said, it certainly can. The follow-up was, is that happening now? And he said, depends on when you ask me. I hear that and I say, yes, one player's actions like this, a George Pickens type action of lack of effort can bleed into every facet of the team because the Deontay Johnson I've seen does show effort. And that play was more uncharacteristic of him than the George Pickens lack of efforts. The other thing is, Dan, you say you can't bench him because you don't have enough talent and you're still trying to win games. To that I say, you can and Mike Tomlin has. In the past, he benched Martavis Bryant in 2017 when Bryant went on social media and criticized his teammates. That was part of how Mike T sent that message to the team. And to me, it is concerning that when you ask Mike Tomlin, why aren't you, why aren't you playing or why aren't you benching George Pickens? He says, because he's so talented. That's why George Pickens keeps getting away with it. And to the point, D. Wood, of you have players that you bring in to wrap your arms around these guys, the Steelers did that. They brought in Allen Robinson. No, he hasn't been brought up in the Steelers standard, but he's been in the league for nine years. They paired him to be sweet mates with George Pickens during training camp to kind of shepherd him and help him mature. And what has that done? You know, it's not for lack of effort. The message isn't getting through no matter who is delivering it. So there needs to be a different way to impart that and to make it sink in.